Okay. Welcome to the evening's teaching session on the mission of God in the Gospel of Mark. Yesterday we looked at the mission of God in the book of Matthew. Some of you raised some of the questions. Even some friends from the Facebook also asked me some questions. We had a good time, by the way. I'm very much encouraged by seeing your commitment to study and see how best you can move. Some of you started making phone calls, asking about research paper and uh, book review. I am so excited. That's what I prayed about and that's what I visualized to see what to happen through this class. Let's look into the Lord for prayer. And uh, to this evening, we study the Gospel of Mark particularly Mark's view of mission. Let's commit ourselves to God. May God help us this evening. Lord Jesus, we thank you today. We commit ourselves to you. Ask you to bless us. Help us to experience your grace. Every day is a special gift from you, O Lord. I thank you for these of my friends who could attend class online. I pray for each one of them, name by name, bless them, encourage them, and provide all their needs, spiritual, physical, financial, emotional. Lord, I pray that uh, they may be full in you, O oh God. Spirit of God, you are always with us. Spirit of God, we ask you to empower us encourage us, motivate us. We are in a context where we cannot move out, but we pray that you please bless us. Help this world, particularly pray for your people, people from different uh, places, countries, origins. All of them are your children. Lord, I pray that your grace may come in a special way so that scientists may invent medicine for this. Lord, we are expecting your divine intervention. Father, we need vaccination. Lord, people are waiting. Lord, many people are losing jobs and many people are really struggling for survival. Forgive us, Lord, if the humanity rebel against you. Oh God, we ask you on behalf of every tribe and tongue and nation. Lord, forgive me and forgive us. Let your mercy may come like a rain. We may experience your providence. Father, we pray that you bless us. Today, as we want to learn your mission mentioned in the book of Mark, open our eyes to see you in a special way. Listen your voice in a marvelous way. By committing all the distractions into your hands, Lord, they may not disturb us. The internet, the uh, electricity, the voices around should not uh, distract us, help us to have that attention to listen to the lecture. Hide me behind your cross. Help us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, are you able to see moving this screen? Can you hear me? Yes, brother. I can hear you, but the screen is not moved still. Oh, screen is not moving? Moving, moving, moving. Yeah. Okay. So yesterday we had an in-depth study on the mission of God in the Gospel of Mark. I look at the book today. The Mark, uh, Yesterday we have seen mission of God in the book of Matthew. And today look at the book, Mark. Christ, Christian mission. Jesus mission, by the way. So the Gospel of Mark particularly talk about the mission of God in the context of liberation and in the context of taking care of the neglected, harassed, helpless, oppressed, and the marginalized. Particularly, the liberative theologians, whom we call liberals. 
we keep them particularly in a particular name called liberative theologians. So when you read this uh, Bevan's book, Khan stands in context. So he mentions all these different uh, um, ways of looking at theology. The liberative theologians particularly take the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 16 to 18, where Jesus declares his manifesto. So today we are going to see, I relate with Mark's gospel because it runs so fast. This is the most rapid gospel. Small in size, but thick in theology. A lot like uh, preaching at times, the word immediately appears in this gospel, up, almost up in 39 times. If you start reading from chapter 1, time and again you see this word immediately, 39 times. A little gospel, a few chapters, but 39 times you see immediately. An urgency of the mission we see in this gospel. His purpose is to reveal Jesus as the chosen Messiah. And also his purpose is to see, show that Jesus as a servant. Jesus defines Messiah with three strong statements of purpose in the gospel. Each of these statements also can be applied to what we are in Christ. Mark 138, he said to them, let us go somewhere else to the town nearby so that I may preach there also. For that is what I came for. And he went into their synagogues throughout all Galilee, preaching and casting out demons. Preaching and casting out demons. Particularly the Gospel of Mark also talk about the significant manifestation of the Son of Man, the Son of God. Jesus came to preach the gospel. The very purpose of his incarnation into this world is to reveal the Heavenly Father. Preach the gospel. Ultimate, the purpose of the mission is to preach the gospel. But again, within that framework of preaching the gospel, Mark particularly talk about addressing the socio-political economic structures of the context today. Early Christians, well, early translations, God spell, now gospel, evangelion, the Greek word evangelion. God spell, now we talk about it, gospel, gospel. Mark 1.14, what is the gospel? Now, after John had been taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and believe in the gospel. He started preaching the kingdom of God straight away in his mission inauguration. Matthew 24, 14, yesterday we have seen that book. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to the nations and then the end will come. The realized eschatology, what we talk in the gospel of John, we may be looking at later. Mark 1, 15, the time is fulfilled. Why I brought Matthew's statement again here, and time. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. You know, the very focus of the gospel, Mark, gospel of Mark, is believing in the gospel, <coughs> preaching, and persuading people to repent. You now, the repentance matters. So it was a gospel to be believed. It was a gospel to be believed. Now people have to keep their faith in this gospel. The kingdom of God is at hand. 
we must continue also to preach the gospel to repentance and belief. You know, these are the two words, repentance and belief. So without repentance, people may not believe in Jesus. They may believe, but that belief may not be rooted inside their cognitive mind to accept Jesus as the Lord and the Savior. Not the repentance is essential. That's the reason this gospel talk about repentance. What is the mission again? Helping people to experience that anubhava of repentance. When an, when an individual experiences that repentance, he, receive, he understands the grace. Now here the key essential element in the preaching Mark brings us to our notice is repentance. Mark's gospel again, chapter 8, verse 35. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. Now he talks about the cost of preaching this gospel. Now it is a very costly affair. Proclaiming this gospel may require individuals' very life itself. But again, Jesus assures, even if you lose your life, you will gain it again. Requiring giving up ourselves and giving for the sake of Jesus' gospel. You know, it requires giving up ourselves and giving for the sake of gospel's sake. Giving up is not an easy task because we are human beings we have a tendency of acquiring more and more a dil manga more this heart wants more and more accumulation we want more we want more giving up is very difficult but this is required in the kingdom of business what is mission in the mission of god there is a lot of sacrifice involved in it giving up that's the reason jesus particularly the key text in this Gospel of Mark is chapter 4, chapter 10, verse 45, where we uh, read, The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. As a Son of God, he showed the example of giving up in the context of mission because the heavenly father sent him as a missionary to the humanity he gave up he gave up his right he gave up his privileges he gave up everything requires giving up ourselves and give living for the sake of the gospel living for the sake of the gospel apostles chose chosen to preach the primary reason for choosing apostles was to prepare them gospel preaching in this particular book we see how jesus selected his disciples 12 of them the primary purpose of selecting these 12 individuals after the whole night prayer you know he selected with a purpose to preach the gospel i'm reminded by boxing when he was in about to inaugurate his ministry he went to um, a mountain the whole night along with his uh, very thick associates, they prayed on the mountain. The whole night they prayed and inaugurated the mission with a few individuals. It spread across the globe. Many individuals have done in our indigenous cultural context as well as in the foreign missions. Primary reason for choosing disciples in our small organization or anywhere, Gospel of Mark gives a particular emphasis was to prepare them for gospel preaching. Either we study here in the Bible school, online or offline or virtual, whatever the medium it is for the preaching of the gospel. Again, what is the gospel? That's a different big question. So Mark 3, 14 says, and he appointed 12 so that they would be with him and that he would send them out to preach. The Gospel of Mark particularly emphasizes preaching the gospel. Christ expects us to preach as well. We inherit inner charge. We inherit 
their charge. Jesus gave charge disciples. We inherit from them. So Jesus expects us to preach as well in a context. Either we are locked down or unlocked down, maybe locked down 2.3 or 4.3, 10.5. We don't know what will happen. But uh, the primary purpose of our very existence is to bring the kingdom of God nearer to the people. Mark 16, 15 to 16 says, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Quite interesting. In the gospel of Matthew, we see, go and make the disciples of all nations. But this gospel clearly says, go and preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed and has baptized shall be saved. And he who has disbelieved shall be condemned. Written by Theodore in 1953, the parable of the life-saving station. Life-saving station on a dangerous course. Small, plain, crude life, saving situation. Now, many excuse, exclusive clubs, most to ship record down. And today, there is a lot of shipwreck in our mission agencies. Getting in easy, but traveling is a little difficult. Now in that book, he explains so many things. I don't have time to give that all narration. Let me move to 17, Marks 2, 17. And hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Luke 19.10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Now again, one of the mythological um, implications that we can derive from this book and also one of the strategy that we understand from this book is Jesus is the friend of sinners. He's the friend of sinners. Even people looked at him and said, hey, he's the friend of sinners. He was always near to the people who are lost. Not for the righteous, not for the Pharisees and Sadducees who are so pride, proudful of their religion. You know, he didn't come to establish a religion, by the way. He has come to rescue the weak, the marginalized, those who look at him. Messiah as sinner seeker. You know, that's the mythological context we understand from the book of Mark. Messiah as sinner seeker. And today we are surrounded by sinners everywhere. But we are habituated to condemn the sinners saying that you are sinners, you are sinners. Of course we preach. But we are, our very existence, our very mission is for them. By the way, we are for the sinners, allowing them, accepting them as they are, understanding their sinful situation. Jesus welcomed the sinners to him, the tax collectors who were understood as sinners, oppressors, and uh, the, the prostitutes and uh, whatnot. Everybody was welcome to the presence of Jesus. And today we are surrounded by individuals, communities, and people groups, and the communities. Different caste groups, and different uh, cities, villages, the so-called sinners whom we address them. Yes, there are sinners. They are sinners because they are ignorant. The God of this age has blinded their minds and their eyes so that they are not able to have this darshan of Jesus. No, we are surrounded by sinners. But what is the mission? Messiah as a sinner seeker. If Jesus is in India today, Jesus as community seeker, the so-called sinners whom we understand, the rebel in attitude, people with the rebel in attitude, because in that time, they were such kind of people. But Jesus was the friend of sinners. Jesus saved lost sheep. The other mythological concept, he has come to seek the lost. Matthew 6, 34, when Jesus went ashore, 
He saw a large crowd and he felt compassion on them because they were like sheep without shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Again, 15, 4 to 6. What man among you, if he has a hundred sheep and has lost one of them, does not leave the 99 in the open pasture and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and uh, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Here is the context. Who are the lost? If we open our door, come out and look here and there, left and right and friend, we see people who are lost. And we need to have that compassion to our people. And the particular text says, Jesus moved with compassion when he saw them as a sheep without a shepherd. He was moved with compassion. But somehow, I'm not sure how and why this attitude of critical approach, when my clergy and my pastors, particularly when they come out, look friend, right and left, all the time they see these idolaters, the Hindus, and uh, the, uh, the, the uh, persecutors all the time looking at them as the demons, casting out the demons, and, all, and looking at them as an enemies. By the way, a follow, follower of Christ doesn't have any enemies. We are here to love people. And the Gospel of Mark particularly emphasizes the mission of Jesus is to be a friend of sinners. Yes, we are surrounded by great sinners who are persecuting us, maybe who are idolaters, who do not understand the nature of God like you, you and I understood. But what is the mission of us today? Our mission is to have the compassion. Jesus moved with compassion when he saw the crowds without a shepherd. No, when we have that attitude in the mission field, we will be the friend of Hindus. You know, a pastor in a, in a locality should be understood, identified as a friend of sinners, a friend of Hindus, a friend of community, a friend of social relationships. But somehow we are not taught how to build relationships, how to build bridges with the communities. And of course, a, a religious uh, life and some thick lines are there, you know, rejecting people for any small region. No, I don't eat this. I don't wear this. I don't come to your um, wedding. I don't come to the burial. I don't come to your, your uh, family social gatherings. You know, most of the times it is the social gatherings chopped off. As a result, we are not the friend of the society. By the way, when William Carey came to India, he understood the Indian mind. He has seen a lot of evil in Indian cultural context, but he was not alone. He did not disassociate, uh, disassociate it with the culture and the context of India. But by the way, he was a friend of India. The title was given to him as the friend of India. It was the, it was the Brahmin community who helped him to learn Sanskrit. He became a Sanskrit professor in Fort William College in Calcutta by the investment of the Brahmin friends who never knew Christ. And he maintained that relationship. By the way, we are boastful of uh, his translations. We say that he translated more than 40 Indian languages. But it's not on his own. Credit is not only for him. The unbelieving Indian friends helped him most of the languages. You know, many of the Hindu friends helped him to translate. And by the way, many of the texts have been translated by themselves. But Kiri got the credit. That's a different story. No, when we are in a society, we need to be the friend of the community. That's the, this gospel encourages us and helps us. No matter what happens, we should be the friend of people. We should build bridges which dismayed the self-righteous. Mark 2, 15 to 68. And it happened that he was reclining at the 
table in his house. <laughs> and many tax collectors and sinners were dining with Jesus and his disciples. But there were many of them and they were following him. When the scribes of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, why is he eating and drinking with the tax collectors and sinners? You know, when I read this, as I was preparing, we should teach our clergy to have dine with the different communities. Getting into that social arena, building relationship with the people of our culture and the context and different religious communities, eating and having a cup of coffee with the friends, with the people whom our, my clergy calls them as a sinners. That's, that's of that's the purpose Jesus called us. That's what Jesus did it. And uh, when I started doing this ministry to Indian friends in 2013, I am enlightened. I was doing like a traditional way of doing. I was a more aggressive American evangelist, rejecting everything and very traditional, coming from a slight of brother and background everything thick line rejecting everything rejecting everything even dissociated with my uh, uh, relatives and all many social gatherings but this wonderful man of god daryl white man attended his uh, seminars and then when i am enlightened by this wonderful scholar and i started associating and then I started behaving like how Jesus asked me to behave and many, many people, my Christian friends and my clergy friends started saying, hey, he became a backslider. Even Jesus was misunderstood. They said, what happened to this Jesus? You know, here these Pharisees and scribes, they were reclining at the table and they were, they were murmuring. Why is he eating and drinking with the tax collectors and sinners? When you start working really what God wants you to do, and people who miss, that's fine, but you, need, but you should be in line with God, no compromise with the sin, no compromise with the theology, but being strong in the biblical foundation, and we should continue to do the mission. People may say that, why is he eating and drinking with the tax collectors? You know, we have... We need to have that incarnational mission model that we are exposed to in this particular gospel of Mark, who were really the worst sinners in the world. Mark 14, 41. And he came to, he came the third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Is it enough? The hour has come. Behold, the son of man is being betrayed into the hands of the sinners who were really the worst sinners. The religious leaders again. The Pharisees and the Sadducees. The so-called people of the text who know the Bible very well. They know the text. It was the interpreters of the text who handed over Jesus to the crucifixion. Mark 15, 31. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes, were mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. No, when Jesus implementing Father's will on earth, People couldn't understand. Doing to save sinners. What is the missiological implication? Mission theology. We are, we are talking about the biblical theology of mission. What is the biblical theology of mission here in the Gospel of Mark? You will be hated by all because of my name. All means, including our so-called religious people. Christians also mission workers, but the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send forth the angels and will gather together his elect from the four corners, windows, from the farthest end of the earth to the farthest end of heaven. So Messiah as sacrificial servant. Mission theology here. 
the Marx theology of mission here we understand the final st statement of purpose in Mark is found in 1045 as I said for even the son of man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many this verse has been practiced uh, interpreted for the sake of self-righteousness many mission leaders they never show what is mercy and uh, they never knew what is liberal and giving and taking care member care in the mission agencies but when the conferences happen from the pulpit you know on the big stages they try to wash the feet of the missionaries just for show off to see show that how what they're practicing the exact meaning here is not just simply to do that act again but to allowing a heart to have the river of mercy a river of grace so that people may enjoy the grace and mercy in our presence for even the son of man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many i'm not sure how the clergy particularly in andhra pradesh i'm not sure how the other states but i'm from andhra pradesh i know the pastors slowly things are changing but particularly in some traditions pastor become a demigod you know he will have some chamchas around some kind of political leader will have some kind of chamchas around they call them as disciples upcoming uh, servants if they want to become a pastor these fellows they have to serve this uh, senior pastor for several years what is the duty giving a tumbler of water and providing food this and that doing all sorts of jamindar you know the kind of in the ancient uh, indian culture we have a jamindari system the jamindari the higher landlord will be sitting and uh, at the at his feet there will be people sitting trembling with fear and anxiety even now the other day i saw one pastor having a biryani in a big plate a small pastor who works on him sitting on the floor nearby a little far he was eating he got one piece and he was throwing that chicken piece to his plate well, that may be a kind of uh, giving but it is it is not the way to treat others most of the pastors they will have some people to pass amma you know we have we have ayagaru such a nasty words have been introduced in the telugu context ayagaru will have some servants in the home ammagaru you know the ammagaru the believers have to go to the kitchen try washing everything in the name of god and again everything in the name of service they can they teach the these people saying that if you serve ayagaru you will get blessing what a nasty mission it is but corona is changing everything now ammagaru and ayagaru are not having any servants now not with all the pastor but a particular segment i don't want to name it there are one or two mission mission church movements particularly in andhra pradesh they worship pastor in a like a demigod particularly in uh, in krishna district somewhere in some part of it i don't want to name it but still even right now you know here actually jesus has come for even the son of man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many as a ransom for many pastor should understand and you are all mostly secular people working in different companies and uh, some of your doctors and some of you are working in some professionals you don't know all this context because i know my clergy most sinful sometime you know if you come across such pastors help them encourage them not to practice not to make slaves there are some bible schools initially because i know in 1996 when i never knew what is bible school i thought bible school all the time 24 by 7 we read the bible 96 i landed in hyderabad not knowing where to go and i thought go oh, bible school it's like a heaven and earth 24 by 7 i can read genesis to revelation i landed in bandlagura in hyderabad all the way outside sri it's like a huge farmland when I went into the Bible school and then um, I thought to read the Bible but they are pulling me out working doing this that that no time to read the Bible farming doing all sorts of things 
and uh, serving those leaders, bringing water, giving them plate of meal, doing all sorts of things, but no time to read the Bible. There are Bible schools like that. Even Chennai, there is a Bible school. Runs by Andhra Pradesh Church Movement. I don't know, name it. And even now, they never teach the Bible. So son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So though he was God, Messiah, son of man, Rabbi, Lord, you know what is it? All these uh, Greek and Hebrew, Hebrew words denotes the Lord Jesus saying that he is the Lord, the omniscient, the only God. He came as a servant, not to be served. When my mission leaders understand this concept, Indian mission context will be in a different ways. There are many demigods. Nobody can come near to them. He came as a ransom to buy back those who were lost. No, he has come to those who are lost. He came to save because God wants all to be saved. What's the reason God wants all to be saved? Even those rebellious community in India, those who are rejecting, those who are wicked, crooked, and sinners, they need to be saved. They need to understand the Maha Jesus. Timothy again, 1 Timothy 2, 3 to 6. God wants all to be saved. From the beginning, Genesis, we have been discussing God of all nations who has a concern for all communities. Even Paul talks about it. Somebody's writing Paul on theology. Even Paul's Paul on theology is the same, God of all. You know, he particularly emphasized everybody should be saved. First Timothy 2, 3 to 6. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. The testimony given at the proper time. Even Paul acknowledges this, this theology of mission that can be derived from the Gospel of Mark, the servanthood. And Christ called us to serve. No, he called us to serve. He called us to be servants for the Gospel. The Mark on theology of mission as a servanthood, Mark 9.35. Sitting down, he called the twelve and said to them, If anyone wants to be first, he shall be lost of all and servant of all. Mark 10, 43 again. But it is not this way among you, but whoever wishes to be become great among you shall be your servant. It is a reverse order in the biblical theology. It is not the top to bottom. It is a bottom to up. You're not starting with career with a high salary pack now per annum uh, 10 lakh maybe one crore you know it's a bottom up you start with nothing zero but god has called us to serve to become great among you shall be your servant when we have this attitude god picks up i still remember as an young boy I finished my mdu from kerala a lot of opportunities came to be in a Bible school principal here and there. But I was, the Lord really asked me to go back to Andhra Pradesh as I was reading the text. I was sitting in the executive committee meeting, rounded by a few individuals, asking me how much salary you want. I never knew what is salary this and that. I said, I don't know. And we don't have a salary in those days, uh, organization, they never have a fixed salary. They call it the basic consolidated minimum salary. BCM as they used to call, they say, if that month, if they have sufficient, they give. If they don't have, they don't give. Whatever is there, we used to share together. I said, yeah, it's a fixed, maybe I think it's about 2,000 rupees per month. Where even in those days, I was offered 20,000. A friend of mine, he called me and said, what a fool you are. Leaving everything, going for 2,000, it's just a pocket money, even nothing, you can't buy anything. But I never got 2,000 for several months, all the time, sometimes 1,000, sometimes 1,500, sometimes 1,800, because we depended on God. But let me tell you, when I look back, no regrets. God blessed me abundantly with the spiritual children. Wherever the city I go, even when I went to 
you as the other day I was preaching and came down from the pulpit this young boy Prem rushes to me and said I am Mr. Prem Anna do you remember me I said I don't know in those days used to come Janaga even you slept in my room on the floor we you started a small Bible Bible study in our room and then the Lord blessed me. I became a believer. The Lord blessed me in several ways. Now I ended up here and serving and working and uh, for a corporate company. Hundreds of stories. Wherever I go, people come. What else I need? A wealth. The spiritual wealth. Of course, God blesses in every aspect. So it is a reverse order. Christ called us to serve in a reverse order. It is not from the top. It's from the bottom up. When we understand serving God from bottom up, you know, God moves with us and we are called for that. Either we are financially blessed or not, that's a, that's a different story, but God will take care of our needs. What else we need? Just a butter and bread, just a, a bowl of rice to survive and sustain. Can God give? Can, can't God give it? Yes, he will give because he's providing the birds and the sparrows and the crows and everything. He will provide his individuals, but it is not this way among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you shall be servant. The, the mark on theology of mission is a servanthood. The primary emphasis in this text is servanthood. Where do we fall today? Are you a sinner who needs to be saved today is the day of salvation. Are you saved needing to serve others? Today is a good day to become the servant of all. Now when we look at the whole world, Lord, I am a servant to people in my apartment. I am a servant to people of this India. Of course there are idolaters and there are some, some people are violent, persecution, but I am their servant. I am their servant. And they'll realize one day, are you a club member who needs to repent? Today is a good day to remember your first love. And today churches became a clubs. That's the reason God closed all most of the clubs, spiritual clubs. But of course there are minority communities, very wonderful churches, godly people. I appreciate, I acknowledge, but majority of them became a spiritual clubs where they can come, jump up and down, throw some money in the offer tree and they have a pseudo happiness and go back home, drive the car next week and continue this club membership. But now all those clubs are closed and praise God. God is helping people to repent. Today is a good day to remember our first love. So having said this, I want to go back to our lecture, class lecture file again. To the other give me a few seconds to take it any questions so far what we discussed I want to sum up We finished this is diaspora mission and uh, this is our teaching original file okay here it is the gospel of mark jesus the suffering servant as i have explained and now so what do scholars say some example salvation to the ends of the earth even i have explained it the Gospel of Mark clearly emphasizes salvation to all. The Gospel of Mark and the mission of God, as we continue to see, Jesus focused on the Jews, but interaction with the Gentiles acts as a forecast of the Gentile mission. You know, do you remember yesterday uh, the mission of God in Matthew's Gospel? We particularly focused on the Gentile mission. 
So even in the Gospel of Mark chapter 4, 7, 24 to 30, and 13, 10 also talk about it. Mission to all. Jesus following Old Testament model of giving our attention to Israel. But the nations are drawn to him. Sentry, petal, model. Nations are drawn to him. We see that model very much here in this Gospel of Mark. Two more slides and we are done for today's lecture. Mark asserts in chapter 1 and verse 1 that his book summarizes the foundations and the content of the Evangelion of Jesus Christ. And Mark is aware of his missionary and uh, catechal responsibilities for the Christian church. As uh, Rudolf notes, the entire history of Jesus has become the content of the gospel. The entire book of Mark is a missionary book. The entire book of, in this early Christian mission in this book, page number 1496, we read this. The entire book of Mark is a missionary book. That's true. If you read that, you know, it's amazing. So when Mark begins his book about Jesus, the Messiah of Nazareth, using words that remind his readers of central elements of the imperial cult, which had become increasingly popular since Augustus. He expresses his conviction that the message of Jesus Christ is the only good tidings that, and that Jesus, the Messiah from Israel, is the only true Son of God whose significance is relevant for the entire world. In our own time, I think this book I have given you, Mission in the New Testament. Brother Joseph asked me, I think uh, he didn't get it. Uh, I send the mail, Brother Joseph. You can download. If you have any doubt, let me know. The Bible tells the story of God's mission in contrast to other competing, competing stories or meta-narratives. Mission in the New Testament, written by William J. Larkin. In our own time, the mission of the church is presented on occasion in triumphant terms in which Christian soldiers march ever onward and God's kingdom swiftly spared from shore to shore without resistance. The light of God's word transformed the darkness of the world to dawn, dawn, and then to the brightness of the noonday sun. Instead of offering more effective or successful methods, Mark points to the way of the cross, the path of self-sacrifice and humble service. Of course, I have already exposed this. The way to the cross, path of self-sacrifice, number three, humble service. And then the mysterious miracle is, however, that in the hostile world, the scatters Seed finds good soil and grows. The gospel meets receptive hearts. It's amazing. You look at here. The gospel meets receptive hearts. And in ways that cannot be explained by reference to human and unity of effort, the work of God moves forward. The work of God moves forward. As we sow the seed, the seed finds a good soil to give life. The gospel of Mark and the mission of God. The biblical foundations of mission. Donald Sr. written by the, In this book, we find the inherent dynamic force of Mark's narrative, its portrayal of Jesus, his opponents and his disciples and his fundamental message of cosmic salvation earned with this gospel the title, the mission book. You know, this is a textbook for mission, my friends, the mission book. Not only does mission have a firm place in Mark's gospel, 
but it comes to the fore in precisely those texts and themes that are at the center of the evangelist concern. Mark invites the church to take up the powerful redemptive mission of Jesus, a mission that embraced Jews and Gentiles both. But this mission will be genuine only when the community has been transformed by a servant and his cross. Page number 229 in this book. Twofold mission 